have an Easter. Keep it honest tonight. Chilly new questions about cell phones and cancer, including this. If they're so safe, why do manufacturers recommend holding them more than a half inch away from your head while you talk? While you talk? Who does that? I certainly have never done that. If they're so safe, why does one top neurologist who deals with brain tumors daily have this to say? I don't think any mother, you know, if they knew that there was a two and a half fold increase in their kid developing brain cancer when they were 40 or 50, would allow their kids to use cell phones. The thing is, they haven't even tested for kids with cell phones. Notice he said if mothers knew. The fact is, there are plenty of studies out there that show cell phone use is safe. But getting back to if, what if the research is incomplete because many cancers take a long time to develop and cell phones haven't been around that long? Recently, the National Institutes of Health released a study showing that using a cell phone changes the chemistry inside your brain. What if it does more than just that? Now, we warn you now, there are no answers yet, but as 360MD Sanjay Gupta found out, there are serious people asking life and death questions. Sanjay, this piece is really fascinating and terrifying, I gotta say. They're just, these cell phones haven't been around long enough, it right. seems like, to really have an accurate sense of whether or not they're safe. That, that's the issue, is that, you know, there's, there haven't been studies to conclusively show that they're dangerous, but there's not studies out there to show that they're conclusively safe either. The problem is the ubiquity of these, Anderson, and, and how much we're using them. Even, even some of the earlier studies, uh, regular cell phone use would be defined as, you know, a couple of hours per week for six months. Who uses their cell phones like that? I mean, most people have it planted to their head uh, many hours of the day and for many years to come. So and the, it's and a, the whole idea that, you know, in the fine print of, of the owner manual and stuff, it says you're supposed to hold it, I don't know, five-eighths of an inches away from your head or something. No, who does that? I mean, I keep mine pressed up. My ear gets warm. I have it pressed against my head so much. Yeah, I, I don't think most people read the, the, the little fine print there. But what I think what's even m more impressive about that is that as much as, you know, you hear from the FCC saying, look, no precautionary measures are necessary whatsoever, the manufacturers themselves, Anderson, are saying, look, uh, five-eighths of an inch away from your ear, I mean, that's, that's impractical, but all of, away from your body in general, so not even in your front pocket, you know, next to your bone marrow, next to your reproductive organs, you know, it's... it's, Wait, it's you're a, not even supposed to have it in your pocket? Well, they say, you know, it's supposed to keep it five-eighths of an inch away from your body, so it's, it's, uh, it's uh, you know, I mean, if you're in your pocket, it's probably right up in, uh, against your yeah. skin, so it's, uh, you know, you're supposed to... They, you're supposed to put in these holsters, again, which very few people use, or in a separate bag and carry it with you. Yeah, I look like enough of a geek as it is. I'm not <laughs> sure I need a holster. But, I, I mean, I, 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 I got to say, after seeing this report, I, I'm going to get one of those earpieces and try to use that. Yeah, well, I was going to ask you if you actually use one. You know, I, I mean, I use, mine all, I use mine all the time. You know, and we, tra we travel overseas. I don't know if you've seen me with this in my ear. Um, I have actually, actually bring you one by your office, too, or sending one to your office. So you're going to have one as well. Look, you know, it's one of these things, Anderson, and I don't want to sound <clears throat> like a, a conspiracy theorist or even, uh, you know, hi histrionic about this, but it is a pretty easy thing to do, uh, to use the earpiece. And, again, manufacturer from the cell phones themselves recommend keeping it away from your A, a wired earpiece is a good way to do that. Uh, so I... I, you know, I, I've been using it for, for, for years now. Who knows what 20 years from now we're actually going to know about this. Right. But, but you know, if the, if the results come back that it was a problem, this is pretty protected. Well, there's also, I, at least from in my thinking, when I, in the past when I thought about this, and in fact I was just talking about it in the office today when, when we were talking about your piece, is that I, I sort of assume like, well, look, everyone uses cell phones. They, everyone, they must be tested and safe and, and stuff. But clearly they just haven't been around long enough and just because everybody u is using them it doesn't mean that everybody, you know, that, that there's not going to be uh, some terrible news about these, the, these things down the road. We find out things years down the road. Leaded gasoline, asbestos, even cigarettes. It takes time for some of that data to come back. And you saw how decidedly low-tech, I mean, the, the, the safety testing is. I mean, I was surprised. I thought it would be much more sophisticated. It's not. And Anderson, let me even tell you, I mean, I got my cell phone right here. You know, that number that you saw on the piece, 1.6, uh, you know, is, is sort of the absorption rate. Right. If you're on your phone and you're having a bad signal and you're having a hard time hearing somebody, that means your phone is setting off even more radiation at that time, trying to get you a better signal. So that, that number is not constant. If you, if you have a bad signal, if you're overseas and, and having a difficult time hearing somebody, you're actually getting more radiation at that time. So these numbers really pop up and down. And what is it about the microwave radiation that, that could potentially cause problems? That's a good question. I mean, you know, so ionizing radiation is one end of the spectrum. That's x-rays. Everyone agrees in, in large amount that can be a problem. Non-ionizing is more like a, a low-powered microwave oven. You know what a microwave oven can do at high powers? It can cook food. The question is, at low powers for long duration, could this be acting like a little microwave oven next to your head and causing tissue to heat up 
and possibly causing damage that way. Uh, we know for the first time this year from a, from a study uh, at the NIH that cell phones have an impact on the brain. It changes the way the brain metabolizes around the area of the cell phone. So there is an impact. The, the larger question is what is that heating and that increased metabolism going to do in the long run? Could it lead to cancer? That's what a lot of people are trying to figure out. I, I've actually gotten a rash at one point in my ear from my cell phone from like the heat of it. Um, I, I'm, co I'm completely going to switch now based on, on what you're saying and, and your report. You also told me uh, during the break that this Dr. Black treated the lawyer Johnny Cochran and, and what did he tell you about yeah. why he thought Johnny Cochran got a brain tumor? Well, I've been investigating this for some time, and it was a conversation with Dr. Black a, a few years ago. I, I asked uh, Dr. Black about Johnny Cochran. I said, do you have any idea why he got a brain tumor? And he replied uh, almost without hesitation and said it was his cell phone usage. And I said, I even said, Dr. Black, come on. I mean, th there's been a lot of studies that show that that, there's, that can't be true. Uh, there's no link. And he said, I'm convinced of it. I'm saying the science simply has not caught up. Uh, people who use their cell phones a lot, you tend to see it. And at that time, wealthier people, because they're the ones that had cell phones, people who had jobs that required them to be on the cell phones a lot, he's starting to see an uptick in brain tumors in th that specific population of people. And, and, and like you, Anderson, it's, it's frightening to sort of think about, but that's what he's starting to wow. see as a very busy brain tumor surgeon. Uh, from now, uh, there's no doubt I'm going to change uh, my behavior on this one. Uh, Dr. S uh, Sanjay Gupta, appreciate it. Thank you, Sanjay. Thanks, Anderson. Thanks. We have an announcement finally on whether cell phones cause cancer. It's something that could affect all of us and our children. Scientists from the World Health Organization have been reviewing studies for the last week or so. I want to bring in an, our senior medical correspondent, Elizabeth Cohen, uh, who joins us live with the findings. Essentially, what did they find? The World Health Organization says that the radiation from mobile devices like cell phones is a possible carcinogen to humans. This is a very big deal, because you and I have done segments about this before. Sure. It has gone back and forth. And this is really the first time that a large group, and it, you know, and it doesn't get any more sort of prestigious in many ways than the WHO, to say that it's a possible carcinogen, it puts it in the company of several other kinds of things. And so I want to tell you what it is, and I think that might give people an idea of what we're talking about. It puts it in the company of things like uh, lead is also a possible carcinogen, according to the WHO, as well as engine exhaust and chloroform. So that sort of gives you an idea of the kind of risk that we're talking about. So here. I, I can't help but ask, I mean, should we, should we be alarmed? Should we be freaking out over this information? You know what? I really hope that people who are listening to me are not freaked out. For two reasons. One, they, they won't do the right thing, and we'll talk about what the right thing is in a minute. And two, they'll, they'll panic, and that's kind of silly, because all, this, all these years we've been on cell phones and holding them to our heads, which is right, the, exactly. what we're talking about as being bad, that's done. You can't do anything about that. And if you're on the phone right now, you don't, you don't need to drop it. You know, it's not that kind of a carcinogen. It's a kind of a carcinogen, or allegedly, possibly, that would build up over time. One phone call, doctors tell me, is not going to give you cancer. So what should we be doing? What, you know With what? this new information, what on earth should we be doing now? We are so lucky that there is something that we can do. Because a lot of medical problems we can't. But we're lucky that there is something, and I am holding it in my hands right now. You use a device to keep that phone away from your head. Okay, I'm going to make it very simple. This is what experts that I talk to don't want you to do. This radiation is, is, go, is very close to your head. The minute that you put... You can hold the phone at a distance. At this distance, that radiation is dissipating. It's, it's not going to affect you very much, if at all. Hold it away from your head, which means using a wired piece like this or a Bluetooth or put it on speakerphone. Keep it away from your head. That's the bottom line, and it's really easy to do. I mean, I can count on one hand the number of times in the past year that I have spoken on the phone like this. I just don't do it. I'm going to change my habits. Uh, do you have any idea or, or did who say anything about whether or not it can be on your body, on your person, in a pocket, in a holster, or anything like that? Did they weigh in you at know, all? WHO really focused on gliomas, which, is, which are brain tumors, because that's what a lot of the studies have been on. But Suzanne, I've certainly spoken to experts who say that they themselves do not carry it on their bodies, that they figure why, why take that risk if there is a risk. And so they will carry their phones in their purses or in a briefcase. You know, they'll try to keep it a bit of a distance away from their bodies. But the jury is still out on that. And what do you think cell phone companies are going to do? How do they respond to this? Is there a way that they can manufacture a safer phone? Right. We're seeking a response from the CTIA, which is the industry group. And I think what could happen is that people like the FD, FT, FCC, sorry, or other groups like that in other countries might say, hmm, this is, you know, this is important what the WHO is saying. And so maybe we ought to tell cell phone companies to make phones with lower radiation. You know, that's a possibility. They may say, sell, tell cell phone companies, go back to the drawing board, come up with a phone that emits less radiation.
So bottom line for those who are watching and who've wondered about whether or not this causes cancer. Right. It's it's all about keeping it away from your head. Right. The WHO says possibly. So experts I've talked to says say why in the world would you take the risk? Keep it away from your head by using some kind of an earpiece. All right, Elizabeth. Thank you so much. Thanks. It's something a lot of people have been asking, mm -hmm. and what clearly we have something that is rather conclusive from a very mm -hmm. prestigious uh, organization. That's it is right. a big deal. It is. It is. All right. Thank you, Elizabeth. Thanks.